Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Today is going to be Kynes Aegis, or Kynes Aegis, or however you pronounce it, wherever you're from. Today we've got a bit of a treat, however, because while these videos are quite difficult to get together because you have to get multiple people capable of demonstrating the mechanics, today we've got a very capable team. We've actually got Greg's. From the PCEU server. If you know what Greg's is, yeah, it's a bakery in the UK. But they've called themselves that anyway. We have a few people that also actually stream and have channels as well. So you need to definitely check out Flecky, Jace, and also Joe Totale or Joe T Totally. I don't know how to pronounce it. Either way, I'm going to put their links on the screen now and in the description. Go and check them out. And there's even a video in here for a world record VKA run and a world record cloud rest run. Two minutes, 55 seconds. Absolutely insane. Anyway, this is where it really counts. These guys are here to help. They've slowed down what they usually do to give us some visuals for the mechanics. For the most part, at least. So, of course, we're going to demonstrate the ad pulls because they are very, very important. And the ads usually white people more than the bosses in this particular place. So, you have to be very careful. Now, the first pull is a bit tricky. You've got a bulwark. And a raider, so not too much to start with. A couple of uh, trash ads as well. Just make sure that you stay out of the negative AoEs. The bulwark has to be pulled to one side because while you can always damage him, he has a circle around him, and if any ads are inside of it, they will be protected. Also, you've got to watch out because he does have a nasty bash mechanic, and of course, he can jump or pull people if they're too far away. In fact, it's a pull. So be very, very careful when you're dealing with those. You do want to prioritize them as much as possible. And if you get two, don't stack them up because one will shield the other. So remember, they have a shield around them. The easy way to spot that is on the ground. It's kind of like a purified circle. Very similar to the War Priests in Hellra and Sanctum Ophidia and all that kind of stuff. Here again, Bulwark needs to be pulled to one side. Make sure you don't stack them on top of other stuff. But this one here is a problem. Of course, if you do stack them but the shield isn't up, you can get away with it. But as you can see, the shield has just gone up. But anyway, the problem. The Tidebreaker. You need to make sure that you focus that target and pay very close attention to his mechanics. Because what he'll do is he'll channel and put his sword into the ground. And when that happens, there'll be a big tidal wave happening. And everyone in the group will have to block. It's a massive radius. You won't necessarily be able to outrange it for the most part. So you've got to block as soon as that lands. Otherwise, you're toast. Once he's down, of course, focus on what's left. Yes, for the benefit of the tape, I died there. Anyway, you get the idea. Kill the tidal breakers or tide breakers first. Focus the bulwarks when you can, of course, but if you can't get rid of the bulwark, first of all, you've got to deal with the other stuff. Just put it to one side and make sure it can't shield anything. This pull can also be quite stressful. I mean, if you've got lots and lots of damage, of course, you can somewhat nuke it, if you like, and drop ulties on it. But you still have to be very careful of the enemy types. Remember, the archers do put AoEs down on the ground that you've got to stay out of. The bulwarks need to be pulled away so they don't shield everything, and the tidebreakers must be killed. They are a pain in the ass. If you see them put the sword into the ground, someone shout block. Otherwise, you're dead. Now, this dude up here, you can see it from a very long way away. There is a, a lightning channeling uh, effect in the very far corner. That's now your priority target. We'll explain more about that in a moment. First of all, these two archers turn them away from the group. Stay out of trouble. As you can see, the lightning is now coming down because we are actually in range of it. Um, that's coming from him. He will constantly channel lightning and it will land on the ground and explode and explode and explode. You've got to step out of it. If you don't step out of it, you're going to die. It will hit you very, very hard. One to two ticks of that, it, even if you've got resistance buffs, will actually annihilate you very, very quickly. So you've got to be really, really careful. So while we didn't necessarily bring all that stuff to start with, you do want to bring lots and lots of resistance bonuses and damage mitigation and so on. Bulwarks are on the side. There's two of them pulled together. Yes, I know you don't want to stack them, but they are kept away from the group. Now, this is very important. This dude here will channel lightning constantly from his person. So if you're within an 8 meter radius of this guy, you're going to take more and more and more and more damage. So be careful. Kill him. Mind your feet. Don't stand too close for too long. These guys here, as you saw, one is shielding the other and so on and so forth. You do want to split them up once that happens. Once they're separated, as long as they're 8 meters apart or more, then of course the circles won't fully overlap and you can hit them. But again, while they don't shield themselves... They do shield others. So two bulwarks shield each other. You'll be there till Christmas if you don't realize that. The way to spot it is, of course, to look at their health bar. If it's golded out or completely solid, so it's got no red bar inside of it, they're immune to damage. Pay close attention to that. Don't hit an immune target over and over. There's no point. Nothing's going to happen. Now, this boss can be quite simple or can be quite stressful. There's a hard mode button on the left there. The main difference in the hard mode is you do not get shamans. However, as you can see, there, there's a shaman to the left and there's a small adder on the right. Those adders and or griffins will spawn on repeat throughout the fight every 60 seconds until 50%. You need to get rid of them because they're a pain in the ass. 
Now you want to stack these together as much as you can. Try not to hard stack as your group and make sure you get rid of that Shaman. As you can see, he's channeling. That means Meteors are coming down on select players and you need to block. If it's on you, you'll have an aura around you. Block it. In the meantime, get rid of that adder. The adder will jump in the air and smash on the ground over and over and over. Make sure you block it. Your adds are the major priority in this fight. You have to know when they spawn and where. So as you can see, the shaman over there has spawned on the right. There's several different spawn points and you just go around the clockwise rotation, but he will spawn every 40 seconds. The griffin add or the sea adder will spawn every minute the shamans every 40 seconds now as you can see here the totems have come in to the room this is a very important mechanic there are four different types of totem there is a harpy one there is a gargoyle one a poison one and a fire one if you see the fire one you need to kill them quickly and stay out of their face because the way they're facing will put a flame for across the group if you see the poison one you can purge it but you need to spread out because it's even more vicious than sanctum of Fidia. If you see the lightning one watch your feet and of course if you see the gargoyle one you will get stunned so you need to break free some very important things to know about the Griffin and the Sea Adder is you do need to kill them quite quickly because if you don't, then they will enrage from the boss and the boss can heal them as well if they're in 10 meter radius. So you have to make sure you apply a lot of damage to them specifically. Also, when they jump, you need to bo uh, block and over time, the boss will occasionally put damage shields on them, which will last about 16 seconds. If you don't break the damage shield on the boss and the adds, you will end up getting a big, big burst of damage on the group and you will die. So be very, very careful. So apart from that, apart from the bases that have already been explained, you've got to watch out for the cleave on the boss because the frontal cleave is really nasty on the tank. And now under 50%, you will get no more griffins, no more sea adders, and you will constantly have him jumping on the tank with lightning damage coming in from the group. As you can see here, we've got the, po the poison totem. Stay away from each other, block the meteors if a shaman is in the room, and make sure you get rid of that totem as soon as possible. Again, you can purge the damage, or you can just out heal it, but you've got to get rid of that totem. You stack up, you die. So to recap... As you can see now, we're going around the room and put the boss on the Shaman. The totems will come up as he channels. The color he is when he channels is the totem that you will get. So there are four different ones. The Shamans will spawn every 40 seconds. Makes it easier on yourself if you move the boss to the Shaman. Remember, under 50%, he will start jumping on the tank's head. The other adds, the Sea Adder and the Griffin, will spawn individually every 60 seconds, but if you don't kill one quick enough, you will get two in the room, and that will be a big problem because the boss will enrage them and keep healing them, so you'll get in trouble quick. If you don't kill them quick enough, they will get a damage shield, and you'll have to break it. Much like the Vmol shield, you need to make sure you spread out, very much like the first boss, otherwise you're in trouble. Apart from that, you go around the room in circles. Every time a Shaman spawns, move the boss to it. If it's a totem, kill it. If it's an add, kill it. Apart from that, soft stack what i mean by that is spread out a little bit be very aware of your feet finally of course you do have to be careful not to jump or move sorry too far away because if you do move too far away the boss will chain you in so control your range as a dps or healer don't go too far back don't go too far in you have to be very very careful so one more time to recap especially under 50 percent you got to watch out for the jumps and the lightning blue totem is lightning that will kind of look like winds going across the ground Orange totem, as you can see there, the flames, get rid of them quick. Green totem, poison, spread out, purge, and get rid of it. And the brown totem is the gargoyle one. That is the one that will stun the group. You need to break free. You'll be in stone. So shaman's a priority. Sea adders and griffins a priority. Boss is the last priority. You can go around in a circle and move the boss to each shaman individually over and over and over as much as you like, but remember the timers. Shaman's on 40 seconds, adds on 60 seconds. If you don't kill the ad within a minute, you'll get two. Yes, of course, that does require you to focus your damage, but don't worry. If you don't have the damage to kill it fast enough and you are in trouble and they keep healing over and over and over, you can move the ad away from the boss as long as you can control it within your group and as long as you can survive. That way you won't keep getting the heals and you can take it to one side and deal with it individually. It's not a DPS race, but of course, if you don't have high damage in your group, then you can alter the way that you approach the mechanics slightly. It's a bit more forgiving than you might think, but the main thing that the problem is in that fight is your damage intake. You'll be hit really, really hard. Yes, of course, we've got some deaths in there, but we didn't even realize that's why we're losing a couple of people now. We, uh, we didn't bring a resistance buff. So now they're swapping out to a warden so we can have major resolve for the whole group. We left that behind. So we're going to continue here just quickly going through these ads. There's only 10 of us. We are going to die a little bit. But these are the same sort of ads as you've seen before. Until we go a bit further down, the other two guys come in on different characters. Um, it's not to say that you have to have certain classes and or skills in your group. But I would highly recommend that you have Novas, Permafrost and of course major and minor resolve for your group. 
Pushing forward a bit now. You know, or hopefully know now, that the lightning guys are a huge priority. So you must get rid of them nice and quickly. The lightning on the ground is horrendous. And it is actually one of the biggest contributors to deaths on the last major pull. If you know anything about Kynzegas already, you know the last pull is probably the worst pull in the game. You've got to get rid of those lightning guys. Now, the Shaman we're fighting here can be interrupted if they try to cast any special channel healing type abilities. But also what you have to do is be aware of the totems. You saw the totems in the last fight. If they happen here, they're going to start wiping the group. So you need to get rid of them. The tricky parts of this particular pull, however, although there's only three major enemies, is that two of them are bulwarks. If you put two of them together, they'll protect each other. If you leave the bulwark on the Shaman while the healing circle or protection circle is running, you can't actually kill the Shaman. So you need to split them up. We got lucky there, and he didn't actually put his channel uh, shield up or whatever you want to call it um, during that fight, but I would recommend that you definitely split them up. Mind your feet here, because we are in the middle of a storm. We are actually getting lightning on the ground, so be really, really careful. Yes, of course, that lightning dude in the far right-hand corner does trigger a lot of this stuff, so you need to watch your feet. At the moment, we're literally just reinviting the people back into the group that swap characters. But again, don't let that be a reflection of how the content actually is for everybody. You bring what you need. We unfortunately left our resistance person out in the, on the sub bench. Um, they're coming in, don't worry. Now, pull these together as much as you can, except you need to be very, very careful and focus on major mechanics here. The Shaman obviously will bring out totems. So you've got to be very, very careful and make sure you get rid of him. But in the meantime, you need to make sure you interrupt any time it channels so that people don't actually get healed. The ads even. Now, the lightning guy at the back is causing a massive problem. And if you don't get rid of it, you are going to die. So you've got to make sure that you have at least half your group focusing on it while you're trying to get rid of other stuff. Or just go full hell for leather and get rid of it. It is a pain in the ass. It's constantly going to put stuff on the ground. And as you can see here, while fighting this bulwark, we're getting peppered with AoEs. So for the purpose of the video, obviously, we're showing that. But what you really need to do is get rid of that little shit in the tent. Take him out. Go straight for him. Pull the bulwarks to one side and just drop ulties on his head. You've got to get rid of them. They are really, really dangerous. Just bear in mind, of course, if it wasn't already painfully obvious, those lightning pops on the ground do have a spreading AoE that comes out of them. You won't take the damage until it bursts. So if it is on you, just move your feet. Don't get caught by it. It's not like these um, environmental lightning pops that are coming down randomly in different locations. They will aim at you and you can move out of it. This pull, again, similar stuff. You've seen it all before. Make sure that you kill the archer, of course, and watch out for AoEs. Make sure you focus down that shaman and watch out for totems. If they do spawn, you've got to kill them. And, of course, if it's a fire one, you don't want to be in its face because it will put a nasty, nasty flamethrower across the room. Any mechanics that are on those totems are already the same as the ones that you've seen on the first boss. So familiarize yourself with those while you're practicing to get that boss down and just be aware that those shamans will do that. Zoss has a habit of teaching you breadcrumb mechanics. And what I mean by that is what I generally say on all my mechanics videos is that they will teach you a mechanic early that you will have to encounter later. So they want to see if you're picking it up or not. So that's the one for that. Now this one is quite straightforward, although somewhat stressful for some. I'm picking up a arrow there, or an arrow, check out my English, and putting it into the ballista. And as you can see here, I can fire it onto there. Now that's something that's going to be relevant later. You'll need someone in your group to be able to do that during the fight. The shamans from the first fight are going to be spawning on that boat and you need to get rid of them. Otherwise, the group is going to get showered in meteors. Now, turn the boss away from the group at all times. You can semicircle behind it if you really want to, but don't stand in front of it. In the meantime, portals will appear during the fight and a conjurer will spawn on the boat. One player needs to go in there and go and kill it if they can. Also, the ballista person can actually shoot them as well. The conjurers will take two shots from ballistas. The shamans, which you'll see later under 50%, will actually take three. So in this particular situation, you need to get a player on there to go and kill that thing. Someone who can survive, obviously. But during that time, obviously that conjurer has other effects. They will actually open up portals in the fight and bring adds through. So the longer that thing is there, the more trouble you're going to be in. But that will happen once every 45 seconds. So you have to make sure that you pay close attention to that. And it will happen until 50%. Deal with the adds just like you would in any other ad pool, but just remember they do follow the same mechanics. You will have to get rid of the smaller ones just with general AoE, but the Shaman and all that good stuff, or the Apothecary even, will have to actually be interrupted, otherwise it will start casting nastiness and put fire AoEs on the ground. So you've got to be careful of that. 
harpooners will target people with the javelin the apothecaries will of course put fire aoes on the ground and they can heal the enemy as you can see here it's my turn to go into the portal because i need to show this for the video all you need to do is take some self survival with you it doesn't matter how long you really take to kill these but obviously the longer the more ads will be in the room but you need to make sure that you can survive fail on that you can get someone to shoot it with a ballista it will take two shots though so they'll have to keep repairing it every single time they shoot now, as you can see here, we're back into the fight. We are still dealing with the ads, so you have to be very, very careful. But now we've got a new mechanic. We have these uh, conduits in the corner, as you saw there on the left-hand side, which I did start to hit. They will chain people to it and tether them. And, of course, it will do damage over time. The longer that is in the room, the more damage it will do, and eventually it will kill the player. So you have to make sure you get rid of that as soon as possible. There are two more things to know. Occasionally, there'll be shock twins in the room, basically like him, and uh, they will hit whoever was aggroed by the boss at the time. If they're hitting any other players, don't panic. You can't taunt them. You just have to make sure you outheal them. And in the same time, you will get shock hitting the ground all the time. So you want to spread out a little bit so you don't overlap that too much. You just need some big heals and plenty of damage mitigation and don't stack too hard. Otherwise, all these stacking AoEs will get the better of you. Now that we're under 50% health, now the fight slightly changes. The Ballista guys can still be used. The Shock Totems still need to be uh, destroyed. But the people on the boat are no longer Conjurers. Now they have changed to what you know as the Shamans. And they will literally fire down Meteors at you constantly. Now there are technically two Ballistas in the room. But we're only using one at the moment. Because we're actually not doing too bad survival wise. When it comes to um, dealing with the Meteors. Because people are blocking when they land. However, if you are in trouble, you do want to take advantage of both of them. Don't just use the one. It'll be a lot, lot easier for you. You can see him there channeling on the boat. Nastiness. Now, one more thing on hard mode. You will get bulwarks in the group. What they do, they protect everyone and make them immune. So make sure you get rid of them. You don't have them on the non-hard mode, but you do have them on the actual hard mode. There you go again. You've got the shock twin in the room. That is actually hitting the tank, so we're quite lucky with it. But you do want to make sure that you stay out of his face. If you're DPS or healers, this can get quite stressful quite quickly. So you need to relax and not get execute panic. As you can see, even here, the mechanics are now starting to mount up quite heavily. And as soon as people start dying, it can get messy very, very quickly. So relax, stay in your heals, keep up your damage mitigation bonuses, especially that major resolve for the group, which currently is off. And, of course, be very careful of the meteors. Yeah, I died, but he's dead anyway, so whatever. Now, to recap slightly on what just happened. So, every 45 seconds, you're going to throw a harpoon at the furthest away player. That's going to turn into a shock conduit. You've got to get rid of it because it will tether to people and kill them. So, obviously, always go for that lightning bolt on the ground. Every 45 seconds as well, there will be a conduit on the boat. Make sure someone goes over there and kills it. And if you need someone to fill up that ballista with arrows and shoot and get, help get it down, then do so. While that happens, by the way, remember, there are going to be ads spawning consistently in the room. If you're on hard mode, watch out for the bulwarks. If you're not on hard mode, of course, deal with them as and when you can. But watch the ground because there's lots of lightning and fire coming. Make sure the boss is turned away from the group at all times. Also, during the fight, there'll be a shock twin of the boss. Make sure, of course, that the boss is aggroed. You can't taunt the shock twin. It will hit whoever has aggro. So if shit happens, there's not a lot you can do about it. Just out heal it and make sure he dies. And, of course, in the meantime, make sure that you do pay attention to the 50% and under because that's when the shamans come in and start firing meteors. you got to get rid of them, otherwise you are in trouble. So use your ballistas, get them down, and make sure you block every time a meteor is on your head. Now you're going to see some new enemies. We're now going to see some vampires rather than just giants, and these are pretty nasty. So these small ads can be all pulled together and you can be dealt with in general just the same as you would any other ad pack kind of get them together and put your aoe down but you've got to watch your feet because there's lots and lots of nasty aoe's and some of them blow up but this is your main focus this dude here the infuser bash him as soon as that starts praying you must interrupt it if you don't every ad in the room will be enraged if you are familiar with black rose prison then you should have no trouble understanding how these ads work if you have been in black rose prison and you do get it but you come in here and fail to interrupt you're not as good as you think you are you must interrupt that mechanic right there. Otherwise, it's a full-out enrage. We made him enrage there so you could physically see it. But in the last ad pull, there are more than that. You have to be very, very careful. That pull is quite straightforward. The last one is going to wreck you. Guaranteed, any group that comes in here for the first time is going to get killed by the final ad pull because of that one mechanic. And it's lazy players that mess it up. You must interrupt. 
This pool also can be quite stressful. You do want to stack these up as much as you can. You want to separate the Blood Knight, obviously, because they're a pain in the ass. This one is actually a Crimson Knight. This one has his own unique mechanics. He will enrage, and he can basically kill a tank. So you have to be really, really careful with him to get really big and smack stuff. There's three different Blood Knight type enemies. There's a Crimson Knight, a Blood Knight, and a Bitter Knight. The Bitter Knight will actually put poison on the target that they are aggro to, so be very careful with that. And with the player being stunned and imprisoned in a bubble, you need to make sure that you get rid of that bubble nice and quick, otherwise they will die. The Blood Knight, however, puts down four crossed lines of, basically, blood um, on the ground, and it will hit people really bloody hard. They take damage every second if they're caught in it, up to seven ticks, which is horrendous. And each tick, they will um, stack a debuff on them to take additional damage for each tick consistently. So you'll be really, really careful. The damage is blockable. You can shield it, but you can't dodge it. Anyway, that's coming up shortly. This particular one, the Bitter Knight, you can see right here, it actually tells you in the subtitle that someone is imprisoned. Now, technically, they're behind us and being somewhat dealt with, but you can see here, we turn around. We free them out of their prison by beating it up, and then we go back to the ads again. Be very careful to make sure that you free that person nice and quick, otherwise they will die. It's very important. The three vampire knights are what you're being taught here, the mechanics. Yes, of course, you've got the infusers to deal with and you must interrupt them, but you are being taught the three major mechanics. I have already spoken about them, but now you're seeing them. So the first one enrages and hits bloody hard and kill a tank through block, depending on how strong they are, unless they have, of course, corrosive armor or whatever. The bitter knight that you just saw imprisons people. And of course, the last one is the one that will put the blood on the ground, which is the blood knight. And that will cause a real problem if you don't block that mechanic. Big red cross on the ground. You can't miss it. Now, this pull is the one. This is the big one. So you have bulwarks to deal with in the middle there on the left. You've got to watch out for that. So make sure you separate it from the group. You've got some shamans in here, which you have to deal with. And of course, the archers as well. And above all, you've got one of those tidal wave bastards right in the middle there that will put his sword into the ground and put a big wave out and kill everyone you've got to make sure you block that wave or focus him down in the meantime you have got the blood knight type enemies you've also got infusers there's the cross there that's the blood knight you've got to block that and of course you are snared obviously when that affects you but the main purpose of this pull is to focus on as many basic mechanics as possible. So watch your feet in the AoEs. Make sure you interrupt the infusers. Now you may not be able to see what's going on here because there's so much going on, but there is one right at the back there and it is being ignored. And that's the problem because it will make the whole room enrage. This is the difference between winning and losing. There is one in the middle here, but the one at the back there is the problem and everything is going to enrage. And there's one more thing we haven't even mentioned yet. They're sitting there in the corner. We haven't even looked until now. This is one of your major priorities and you must kill this. And I would recommend people actually go for this quite early on while keeping interrupts on the infusers. It is one of, if not the hardest pull in the game, so I expect people to mess it up, even we did to some extent. But you've got to keep on the interrupts and the infusers. You've got to watch your feet with the lightning. You have to separate the bulwark from the group, and you've got to block that tidal wave. Apart from that, the rest of the ads are relatively basic, apart from the Blood Knight. But again, your priority targets are entirely up to you, but I would recommend highly making everyone on full alert for those interrupts and make sure you get that lightning dude down nice and quick. Otherwise, you are going to end up in trouble very very early on and it's really hard to recover if that room enrages you are screwed so you'll have to keep wiping and starting again over and over and over it will take practice don't be frustrated by it it will take a little bit of time but once you nail it and you understand those basic mechanics it will make all the difference so now we're approaching the last boss and this is nowhere near as stressful as you might think but there are some very important mechanics that you do have to pay attention to yes of course we're going to hit the hard mode and the boss has a fuck ton of health he's massive but it's just a long fight technically have any cleave abilities but just make it a habit if you're a dps or here to stay behind the boss don't stand in the face it's where the teeth technically are now there are lightning pulses that will come out and affect six players so you spread out let them pop and come back in you can't block them if they overlap but you can damage shield so bring plenty of barriers on hard mode it's six people on regular it's three You'll also get this ad here. Take him to one side and deal with him. The boss can be left in the corner with the other tank. This needs to be dealt with. On regular um, vet mode, he has a lot less health. But on hard mode, of course, he's very, very high health. That much of a regular Kraglorn boss, in fact. But during this fight, of course, the shock waves will still come in. And we'll get these fists pumping out the ground when he puts his sword into the ground. That actually happens to six um, fists that come out of the ground on hard mode. 
three on non-hard mode. It's a lot easier. When he channels his sword, it will jump from player to player to player, and he'll need to be blocked. It's exactly the same as the last boss on Spindle Clutch 2. It's really not that stressful, but try not to stack up, because remember, these lightning effects are still happening. Every time they happen, you need to spread out, let it pop, and come back in again. If you overlap them too much, you will die. Apart from that, keep it turned away from the group at all times as a tank. Bear in mind, obviously, when you do get hit by the heavy attack, you're going to have to block it. And, of course, during his cleave ability, you will get a 20-second damage over time effect on you that you can't purge. So you are going to have to be aware of that. You are going to take it, and nobody should be standing in front of that because you don't want other people to get that as well. The tank can survive it if you've got good heals. DPS will die. Now, very important about hard mode only. There are three different levels in this particular arena, uh, or fight, boss encounter, whatever. The bottom one, obviously this doesn't happen, but the first two, this does. If you res anybody, you get put down here in the vault. And you are being chased by deadly, nasty one-shotters. Weave around them, get back to the portal, come back up. Anyone that ever tries to res anyone is going to have to do that. You get caught by any of those spirits, you are toast. It's a one-shot. Yes, you can dodge roll their slam. Anyway, once this dude is dead, we can then push back onto the boss again, and all the basic mechanics stay the same. Watch out for the lightning, and don't stand in stupid. There isn't that much stupid to stand in right now, just keep the big heals coming in. Remember, if you res anyone, you're going downstairs. Now, put him back in the middle of the room, and when he goes to 90% health, which obviously is going to be a lot, lot quicker if you're on non-vet, um, sorry, non-hard mode, you will have to make what is quite honestly described by many people as a daisy chain. Because there are four kind of conduit or totem type things in the room. All at different um, poles in the room. North, south, east and west if you like. We don't have a compass here. I know, I know, I know. But anyway, there are four. Four different corners. So let's call it 12, 6, 3 and 9. Basically what you need to do is you need to line up as a group while you're all pulsing with lightning. From the conduit in the corner all the way to the boss in a straight line. And zap, 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 zap. You hit the boss and he pops. You need to do this four times. Line up. All apart from each other, big daisy chain, zap the boss. Four times. During this phase, he will take massively reduced damage, so don't try and out-nuke it because you won't. Just make sure that you get your daisy chains on and you break it. And that will happen again very shortly at 80%. So it will happen twice. One at 90, one at 80, whether it's hard mode or not. In the meantime, you are going to consistently get these shock waves that will pop and you need to spread out and come back in again. So... That is the basic part of the fight. Hard mode or non-hard mode, it's pretty much the same. The only real variation to that is, of course, the lightning. You get three, not six, on regular. And the ad has much less health, and he has three fists that come out of the ground, not six. Also, the res mechanic doesn't exist on non-hard mode. So now, it's just a long fight. You'll keep doing this over and over and over, pushing to the next phase, which is now coming up. We showed it before, we'll obviously show it again. The daisy chain mechanic is in, he's channeling in the air. Everybody get in line. You have to spot which one is actually lit up. You have to find the correct conduit or sconce or whatever you want to call it. And once you're in line, zap, he pops. And keep doing that until they're all done. One major factor to consider as far as the damage is concerned on the tank is that the boss will use kind of like a venomous claw mechanic. If that happens to the tank, and it will, you will get a damage over time effect on you that will get more and more and more aggressive. Now, technically, it won't last 20 seconds because he'll do it again before then and it will just restart. If it restarts, it actually starts again from scratch, so the weaker version. And it just consistently fires at the tank throughout the fight. If that does, for any reason, end up on a DPS or a healer, however, you're pretty much dead because you aren't going to outlast that. Now, the rest of the fight from here on out until a set point, which we'll get into in a moment, is pretty much the same. Smack the boss, spread out when there's lightning. Smack the boss, spread out when there's lightning. Not much more to report. It's a very, very... Uh, basic fight when it comes to this point in time. The only trouble is, of course, you do get hit quite hard. Most of the group isn't even taking any damage right now, but the lightning is aggressive, and of course, so is the stuff that hits the tank. Now we've got what I like to call the Aristocats mechanic. If you've seen that movie before, you know what I'm talking about. If not, here's a meme. Now, basically what happens is a 70%, he'll break the floor and you go down a level. There are three vampire knights down here, one of each type. You've got the big, big enragey one. You've got the one that puts the blood sli uh, lines on the ground, which you can see there that you have to block. And you've got the other one that puts someone in a prison. Remember your subtitles, you will spot it. If someone's in a prison, break them out. Essentially, turn all this away from the group and kill it. There's nothing more simple than that. Know those mechanics, watch out for the bloodline, kill the adds. Then, of course, when the boss comes back in, you carry on cracking your DPS out on the boss. There are no more 
um, daisy chain mechanics. They have all gone. That is only upstairs for the first 30%, and it only happens at 90 and 80 anyway. Under 70%, roughly around sort of the 68, 67% mark, you will start to see some new mechanics. You'll start to see coagulants coming into the room, and you will all be cursed. Now, this curse is horrendous. While the big, big red bubble is in the room, which you can see now, there are multiple overlapping red AoEs, which are really nasty, and there's a big, big bleed. If you move around the room, you will take more and more damage while this negative effect is on you. You do not want to keep running around the room while this is happening. Yes, of course, you've got the lightning mechanic to deal with. And of course, if you stack up, that happens and you go boom. But once the coagulants are down, especially the big one, the curse will go away. So that's something to consider. Make sure you do focus that stuff down. But if you run around the room like a loon, you are going to kill people. The trick to that particular mechanic, knowing full well that the lightning is going to go with an overlap on top of it, is to get in a really big circle around the boss. Make sure that you can actually still reach the boss, but make sure you're apart from each other. If you do that, then all the little stacking effects that go on will still be fine because you won't have to move that much and you won't die to that nasty, nasty bleed. It's really, really long. It lasts about 30 seconds almost. And if you don't kill the coagulants, it'll just get more and more aggressive. Either way, you don't want to have to deal with that for very long. Don't move unless you really really have to and even then move very very slightly the more you dance the more you die so that maelstrom shuffle needs to be deleted from your brain right away you can turn around you can focus stuff you can position yourself very carefully but don't run around your movement will kill you so be very very careful again don't stack if you do stack you're going to have the lightning effect you're going to overlap it you're going to have the coagulant effect you're gonna have everything all at once it's a mess the boss doesn't have any cleave on purpose to try and manipulate you into thinking that you can stack and burn but these aoe's make it so you have to spread out so while yes you can stand in front of the boss it's a lot lot safer to spread out a bit and be in a big big circle so just be careful of those mechanics stacking up on top of each other this part of the fight doesn't actually change at all so if you can do this for 10 percent of the fight you can do it for the whole duration of this particular mechanic it's really, really straightforward. You are going to get shadows in the room, as you can see the blood mount in the bottom left-hand corner, using that blood cross mechanic over and over. So you've got to watch for that. But this will just repeat until we go downstairs again. So we're going to fast forward this ever so slightly so we can get to that point because this is basically just rinse, repeat. So at this point in time, everything is pretty much the same until the next phase. It's just a case of repeat, repeat, repeat. You keep hitting the boss until he gets down to about 36%. And then you go downstairs and do another Aristocats uh, situation. But of course, being developer 101 kind of mechanics, we do have the rule of three, which is three levels, three different introductions to new mechanics and all that good stuff. And here's the third one. So you go downstairs and once he comes down, of course, you will have to hold him still and hit him in the back of the face like you normally do. But there is a slight twist to this. As you can see, he did come down with 35, 36% health. And now he's gone up a little bit as he's gone bright red he is actually healing throughout the remainder of the rest of the fight so you do have to focus on the boss make sure you're doing as much damage as you can it's not a really really hard test of dps but you do have to make sure that you are somewhat focused otherwise it's going to take longer basically and during this phase here we are going to see the extra mechanic that you have not seen yet we are going to see the ads at the side which are in kind of um prisons and you have to go over and kill them they only have a million health. They're very, very small, but take your groups up. That is two enemies. Run up, kill one with one group. Run up, kill the other with the other group. Or just have the same group kill both. But honestly, I'd recommend doing two groups just in case you are a bit nervous and you start slacking on your deeps. But if you don't kill them within 30 seconds, you will end up having one of them jump into the fight and they'll be much, much stronger and you will have to deal with them in rage with the boss, which is not ideal. You do not want that to happen. So be very, very quick to go and spot that mechanic when it happens. All the blood around the top of the room, if that's gone, you can run up there and kill the ad. Again, they only have a million health, which is not that much. Your DPS doesn't need to be massive, but I'd send three up one way, three up the other if you can manage it. Technically, the actual DPS you need if you send three people up each side is 11k each. So it's very, very low, but you also have to consider the time it takes you to get up there. So just take three people until you're comfortable and then use less and less depending on how your group is set up. It's entirely up to you. Here, it's rinse, repeat. Hit the boss. The boss is constantly pulsing with kind of a vampire bat type uh, mechanic, like the actual vampire ulti. He's constantly doing damage to you and constantly healing himself while you hit him. So big heals right now. Now we did switch this out again and dump the hard mode in order to just show you what happens if you do not kill the guys in the cages. So we've actually allowed one to jump into the room. And on non-hard mode, of course, he doesn't hit quite as hard, but he's still pretty dangerous 
but the mechanics are the same. So just keep hitting him while he hits you and you heal at the same time as he heals off of you. Big, big heals, big, big mitigation bonuses. Keep it up and just slap him. Now here's the ad. If you don't kill those up top, you'll get them here. One, if you don't kill one of them. Two, if you don't kill them both, they will hit very, very hard. And we do have a lot of area of effect damage. So they have died quite quickly, but they do have a substantial amount of health if they're on hard mode or if they are not killed upstairs. So do make sure that you don't let that happen. Apart from that, that's pretty much it. Very basic mechanics. Stay away from the boss, stay in a circle as much as you possibly can. That way you don't overlap your lightning. Phase one, add to deal with at 95%. Get rid of him. Watch out for his charge and make sure you block it. Watch out for the fists coming out of the ground. Make sure you step out of them and make sure you don't stand in front of his cleave. Phase two, 90% and 80%. You've got the daisy change. Very simple. Line up with the conduit as a group. Hit the boss and do it until all four are gone. Then continuously hit the boss until he's 70% and he'll jump down to the second level where you will be greeted with all three versions of the vampires that you have to deal with and now they'll have spirit versions of themselves in the room repeating their mechanics. So be careful, make sure you spread out. Blood coagulants coming into the room, make sure you kill them and do not run around the room otherwise you'll die. And of course make sure you do block if any of that blood cross lands on the ground. Then when you go down to the last phase, all you have to do is basically just hit the boss and out heal the damage he's doing to you while you damage him and counter his heals. In the meantime, of course, any prisoners that spawn, go up and kill them, come back down again. Pretty much it. Gonna take a bit of practice, but you don't have to go straight into hard mode. Go on to normal if you want to start with, then go on to veteran and then go from there. Take your time, practice, practice, practice. Make sure you coordinate, otherwise you're dead. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for watching. I hugely appreciate your support. If you are not subscribing already, please do make sure you hit that button. It is free. And make sure you jump over to the other three channels that I mentioned as well. From Jace, from Joe Total, and of course from Flecky. I'm sure I've said Joe's name incorrectly. But either way, their links are all there. Check out their videos. Check out their channels. Sub them, follow them, and definitely check them out on Twitch as well. Big shout out to the whole Greg's crew in general. Thank you very, very much indeed. Again, people, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.